a tough time. A tough well, time. I bumped it to 5.30 because I heard about speaking those things uh, you know, during budget season. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Vibes. You guys are on. All righty. So welcome. This is the, this is a little echoey. This is the May 10th um, meeting of the Finance Committee. And we are really here primarily to review the year-end tax, um, the year-end transfers, line item transfers. Um, but I guess we posted an agenda, and if do you want to go over minutes or any other business first, or? Well, we can go through the minutes. So I sent out the minutes for, I'm gonna to have to try to remember. Um, I think it was, a, hold on one second, let me look, because I don't remember now. Sorry, did I catch you off guard? No, that's okay. Uh, I sent out the minutes for, the March 22nd, 2023, and April the 24. April 24th, 2023 uh, meetings. I did not get any comments back. I read them all, and they look good to me. So I'll make a motion to accept both sets of minutes as presented. Second. Seconded. Any other discussion? Besides, great job, and thank you. All in favor of accepting the minutes bill are you is that a yes oh yeah 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 thank you um the other item that i had to talk about was the town meeting recap but if anyone has any comments we can talk about it if you want to just focus on the um the transfers, that's fine too. I, I think obviously everybody knows that the override passed. I feel it was an important override this year, but that's a decision that I came to over like seven years of evolving information. And so I think it was a, I'm, I feel badly that it was such a close vote and that the town is so divided on the matter. I don't like to see that. Um, but I think given that it passed by a wider margin in Merrimack, if it didn't pass here, it would have just completely crushed our town having to pay that assessment without the resources to do it. So it is what it is. There's a group of us that are getting together to continue moving forward on understanding a little bit more about the school formula. And I don't think that we call, this is just me personally, I don't think that we call passing the override a win. I think that it was something that needed to be done, but I think that we're gonna continue to try to work harder to understand and advocate for our town and a better um, division of resources going forward. Does anyone have any other thoughts or comments? So, and thank everybody for the work done toward that, and especially you, Rebecca. So that said, we have minutes, uh, pardon me, transfers. <laughs> transfers. So these are transfers that need to be reviewed we, within 60 days of the end of the fiscal year the selectmen and the finance board can authorize transferring um, budget lines from one department to another. And since a budget is really no more than a best guess and a working document, we do our best guess as we did this year to lay it out going forward as to how each department, what their needs are going to be. And, you know, I think amid the entire budget right now, we, we're looking at about $80,000 between various departments to move a little bit of money here and there to even out what, what departments need a little bit more money and what departments have a little bit extra money to turn back. And I think that's the nature of the, the budget and that's why there's the ability to make these transfers close to the year end. So. 
What's the best way? I know that you review, and I know the Board of Selectmen re reviewed and approved these on Monday night. So you've been through them once. So what's the best way, do you think, to, to go over them? Whatever the pleasure of the board is, I can go through them as I did with the Board of Selectmen and give a, a brief update in regards to the memo that I submitted. Sure. Did you go through once the transfer is from and then what what's depleted and then what needs to be as a whole? So we don't necessarily focus on where it's taken from because it's a group of, it's like a lump sum of money. So it doesn't just, you don't take just like X amount to fill X amount. So it might look like it's transferred back and forth, but it really is the total sum of the money is being reallocated in order to fit the needs of that particular line item. So right. it not necessarily isn't just like using $6,000 from one item to put $500 in another because it doesn't add up to be the exact amount. So it, it is more of a... I mean the whole column, the transfer transfers oh, okay. from, there's that whole left-hand side that, is that how you went? For the Board of Selectmen, I only went through the line items that needed to be funded, the additional okay. funds. Okay. But I can do both, whatever no. the pleasure of the board whatever, is. Whatever works for you. Okay. So I guess I'll start first with what is needed and why it is needed um, to the best of my abilities. The first one listed is the Treasurer Online Payment Fees. Uh, they are looking for $500. The line item was not budgeted properly. This line item addresses the online payment setup and transactions for the clerk, excise tax, real estate, personal property tax, water, sewer, fire department. Uh, we did increase this line item in the fiscal year 24 budget to reflect what we're seeing. Um, this is the second year that we've had to ask for a small transfer in this particular line item. The next one is the payroll fees. We're looking for $1,500. Uh, payroll fees were slightly higher for moving to electronic checks and providing access to employee pay information and your W-2s online. The postage, we're asking for $5,000. The stamp prices have increased um, again, and we also renewed our lease with the Pitney Bowes Company. Um, so the new machine was slightly higher in the lease agreement that we have with them. Uh, we have been trying to move to a more efficient process with our postage. Each individual department now has a department code. So originally all of the postage was carried under the treasurer collector's budget. Um, and since various departments are utilizing that machine, we thought it made a lot more sense for them to calculate that in their expense line item since they know what they're doing on a day-to-day -day basis. So we're hoping to get that particular line item in check as well next year. Uh, but again, with the increases to the rate and the fact that we print um, and mail our own tax bills, that can be quite costly at times. The next account is the tax title account, and we're looking for $10,000. Um, as we know specifically with this board, we've been pushing towards um, establishing a process to resolve the tax title account, and we have been very successful in that effort. And now we're taking it to the next step, which is to start the foreclosure process on those properties that we're just not going to collect those taxes on. So looking at outside counsel, uh, there is a need for an additional, um, there a need for additional funds in order to support um, that mechanism. The Do next, you feel comfortable with the tax title for next year. I think it could be increased, but just like snow and ice, this is one of the only accounts that you can actually spend in deficit. So based upon what we're experiencing with the court system and how we're proceeding through the foreclosure process on these properties, some might require more and some might require less. And where we don't have that restriction as to being able to, you know, being told stop mid-year, we can kind of uh, recoup that. So I feel comfortable with leaving it where it is for the time being. And in, unless we decide to become even more aggressive in that effort. How many properties are you foreclosing on? I'm not sure. I'd have to double check with the treasurer collector, but I can send an email afterwards and let you know where we are with all of the tax title accounts. That would be helpful. Just so we can have a reference point. Of course. The next account is the technology, and it's the computer hardware maintenance and licensing fee account. We're looking for $20,000. Um, the town has an IT contract with Boston Sound System Solutions for a computer server, infrastructure, and maintenance of machinery. So we had that life cycle management uh, contract that we had talked about. So we have all new computers and BSSs responsible for maintaining that infrastructure. Um, it was a great way for us to get new infrastructure into the building that hasn't been done for a very long time and also come with some type of maintenance that is being accounted for as part of that contract. It does not include troubleshooting. So if you're experiencing an issue and you want to connect to the printer or if you're, you know, having an issue with like a software 
like your Microsoft and not knowing how to do something specific or Adobe's not loading properly, those are not necessarily covered under the contract. Some of it is, um, just not all of it. Um, so we had a couple of instances with the switch over to the lifecycle management contract where people were struggling with some of the newer software and that required some additional support that wasn't yet budgeted. We also moved to the Microsoft Office 365 platform and that was something we did through the American Rescue Fund. But again, with the transition, there was a couple of things here and there that weren't necessarily accounted for on the ARPA side of things. And so that fell down to the technology. And the same with the phone system since we switched vendors. Um, the other issue that we had encountered this specific year was that we have our uh, Wayne Security um, does our cameras and our security system here in the town hall and over at the Bagnell School. And we had to uh, replace some of the equipment. Um, it failed unexpectedly and we needed to have that replaced so that we could have the cameras up and running over at the school. So these were not budgeted expenses um, and that's the reason for the overage. And the economic development department, we have the conservation expense line item. We're looking for $500. Um, we had an unexpected um, professional liability case come at um, the town and so we had a deductible that we needed to pay for $5,000 and it was not budgeted for that fiscal year. We have one outstanding that we knew was coming, but we did not for the other. So we had to put those funds towards that deductible and therefore some of the money that we had allocated for VZ Memorial Park and their insurance monies was not available. And so we were looking to the revolving fund at that point in time for the VZ Memorial Park and they were just about hitting that time of the season where they start getting a lot of reservations so it was a little low and was not able to cover and therefore we used the conservation expense line item. So unfortunately that left the account a little low and therefore they're looking just for $500 just so that they can finish out the year and that goes towards um, Massachusetts Department of Environmental Protections, their permitting process, they have to do certified mail receipt and that can be quite costly. So it's $8.10 per piece of mail. And then also if you watch the Board of Selectmen meeting, we've been a lot of complaints about dogs and leashes and whatnot on the dog, um, on the dog trail, on the community trail. And therefore we're looking to purchase some signs and the conservation has been very helpful in that process. So they wanted to contribute to purchasing those signs. Under the facilities line item, we have the utilities um, and we're looking for $34,000 to be transferred. That is the largest of the transfer requests that we are proposing. Uh, specifically, there were a lot of factors that were completely out of our control. We had two electric rate increases that totaled over 14% over what we had last spring. National Grid also increased their prices and we have a couple of gas accounts here in town. Um, we also transferred to the new phone system and our former phone carrier, we had some overlapping bill cycles where they were um, threatening to cut off service based upon the switch over. So we had like a month to carry before they shut off the service and it would switch over to the new. Um, so we had some overages in the utilities account. The next account is the police department. Uh, the training wages were looking for $2,700. Uh, the police department received new firearms and the officers are required to get training um, at the range and therefore uh, they need the additional money to make sure that they can um, carry the firearms that they received. For highway, we have the snow and ice budget. Uh, at annual town meeting, we allocated about $50,000 of free cash to go and cover that overage. Um, Unfortunately, there was uh, some of the invoices were not reported at that point in time when we posted the warrant. So we need an additional 1800 to make sure that that count is um, clear. The other items are their Council on Aging. They're looking for a transfer in their expense line item of $600 to pay for the last quarter of their T-Mobile account. And they are also looking for $1,100 to be transferred to uh, pay for the last quarter of fiscal year 23's fuel consumption. And the last- What does the $600 say van maintenance? So the one on the Excel spreadsheet is incorrect. It's been corrected at the um, okay. Board of Selectmen meeting. Kathy Cashinellis, Selectman Cashinellis had, had saw that there was a transcription error and they were just flipped. So it should be 600 for the expense line item and it should be 1,100 for the van. That's been updated on the sheet that was okay. signed by the chairman of the Board of Selectmen. Okay. And then the last item is the debt services. We're looking for $4,000. We did not budget this line item properly. Um, we had the debt service and administration fee budgeted, but we had um, a ban renewal that we did not um, anticipate 
payment. So we needed to increase that account to allow for Hilltop Securities to be paid. And then if you're looking at the revenue side of things or where we're transferring those monies from, uh, we are transferring about $6,000 from the Selectman Stipends line item. We are transferring about $10,000 from the Town Council legal expense line item. We're transferring about $13,000 in the conservation agent wages, $5,000 from the administrative assistant wage expense line item under the Economic Development Planning and Conservation Department. We are looking at $2,000 from the municipal buildings repairs and maintenance line item. Under the police department, we're looking at $7,700 in the reserve wages and $5,000 in their fuel wages. And in the fire department, we're looking at $10,000 under their drill wages and $3,000 under the EMS certification wages. Under highways, we're looking at $5,000 for the front end loader lease. And in the council on aging uh, director salary, we're looking at $15,000. So we're looking at a total of $81,700 to be transferred from those accounts into the accounts that we just detailed with a shortage to equal another $81,700. Motion to transfer $81,700 as noted. Second. Any further discussion? Pretty self-explanatory. This is maybe annoying and nitty gritty, but I, I'm confused about the, the van maintenance because I know we used to have money for the van maintenance because they had an old van. Then they got the new van and we said, why do you need all this extra money for the new van. And so we reduced it, but it, there was still, I thought, substantial money to maintain a brand new vehicle. And so, and it's not a lot of money, so it's not a big issue. I'm just a little bit, I don't know, confused as to why we need to put money into a brand new van. So I know that the um, vehicle maintenance line item uh, the finance board had worked with the Council on Aging to increase that line item substantially back in um, FY or create that line item back in FY20 because the current van had been experiencing some issues and you were trying to push it as far along as possible. Um, and so that line item in FY20 was the $4,000. Um, then they kind of held that through and then in FY22 they purchased the new vehicle with the monies that we had under the interim finance director. I forget exactly where they were allocated. I don't know if it was free cash. Free cash. So that was done in the FY22 so they were able to purchase the new vehicle. Then they had their new director in place and the new director had proposed to eliminate the line item to only $1,500 from the $4,000 that it originally was, which is a substantial hit. And based upon the needs of any vehicle with gas, oil, the easy pass, um, the amount of trips that they take in terms of, you know, all that type of stuff, I would say that the, the line item and was it, we would advise that it shouldn't be cut that much, maybe more so in half. Um, so I do know that this fiscal year was very difficult and challenging for them to, to keep up with the maintenance because it had dropped so substantially without taking into consideration that even though it, it's a new vehicle, it still does need proper inspection, oil changes, gas, So it's almost like, it, it, it's more almost expenses related to the van than actually maintenance. It's not fixing things, it's gas and using it. There is some issues with the van currently, which is very disappointing. Um, but I believe, and I've, I've tried to share with the Council on Aging, the, um, we were uh, issued, um, why can't I think of the name of it, when uh, it's under warranty, but there's a, a defect with the HVAC system. A recall? Yeah, a recall. So we recently received notice of a recall in terms of some of the way that the HVAC is operating and the humid humidity and how that's all. So I've been trying to get them in touch with the dealer so that they can go back and get those issues um, mediated. But I, from my understanding, that should all be covered. Um, so I don't know if yeah. there's any additional expenses being mm -mm. put forward that I'm not aware of. So we didn't necessarily buy a money pet. That's what I'm... Yes. Good. Thank you. That was my discussion. It, but we still needed to vote. So all in favor. Unanimous, thank you. Mm -hmm. 
nice informative summaries, Rebecca. Thank you. So that's it. Town meeting. We did the transfers. Meeting minutes we covered. Plan the next meeting. Um, we'll probably have one more final meeting. Uh, need to do transfers closer to the end of the year. I'm hopeful that that's not the case. We um, we really did try and get ahead of the issue and ask departments if there was any additional monies that they were aware of or any additional monies that they think that they were going to need. I know that we were very concerned about the town clerk with the unfunded mandate from the state about the elections. There was a reimbursement process, so there was no need for any additional funds from the from the town clerk. From the insurance side of things, we were a little skeptical because, again, we didn't anticipate that last um, deductible to come through but fortunately um, because we paid early we got a credit and then also under Maya if you go to webinars and trainings you get points and they reduce that so you can get that money in the form of a check so we were able to do that and that we um, added to the account so we were looking good on that side of things um, Ellen has done a, a, an analysis and was very um, cautious with the way that we were estimating the additional utility accounts for the next few months so I am extremely, extremely hopeful that we will not need to um, have any more transfers. Additionally, we did put a uh, spending freeze on the department. So as of May uh, 15th, uh, they will no longer be able to submit any invoices without uh, additional scrutiny as to whether or not it's essentially necessary for those um, expenditures to be processed this fiscal year or they can wait until July 1 um, in order to be purchased so that we can fend off any additional spending. Uh, and make sure that if we did, in fact, have to come forward with more transfers, there's definitely enough money in those line items to be reserved and moved as needed. So then I would think our next meeting would be, I, I think that we can plan it as needed. I don't think that we need to put a meeting on the calendar. I, I think that you know, I would prefer to be considerate of everybody's time. I know everybody's made a lot of time through the budget season and the town meeting and then to be here. And I don't know, it's spring and it's summer and it's outdoor time. And I wouldn't call a meeting just for the sake of calling a meeting. So does that seem, you yes, know, one, it, well, once we have on some. On top of it, some of our appointments end on June 30th. So right. we, we don't even know who. Who to see be how here. reappointments go. Mm -hmm. I would put out once again that we have one other person that didn't make it here tonight who had a conflict, but otherwise that that's our full board at this point in time. So we have two full vacancies and two alternate vacancies, I believe. And then we'll see how, and we have two terms ending. So potentially four vacancies and two alternates. So, so anybody that is interested, reach out. Reach out to any of us on the board. Reach out to Rebecca um, or anybody else that you know in town that might ha have any guidance as to how to connect with us. But we would love to have more representation from the town. Um, other items not reasonably anticipated? Does anyone have anything else? Um, just off of what you said um, with um, Sarah's election as to Water and Sewer Commission, um, she, you know, she's resigned from the board, so I just wanted to thank her for the time that she's put forth. And, you know, we wish her, I wish her the best. Thank you. I do too. Um, Sarah, right, I should have said that. Sarah resigned because she's now on the water and sewer board and so I'm sure that she will have a great impact there and yeah I agree I echo what you say we thank her for her time I thank everybody for their time that um, you know however much however little however not not that Sarah did little I didn't mean to say that I mean to say any contribution that anybody can make to this board or any other board, I, I really appreciate. But Sarah did bring a level of energy and engagement to this board that I really, and commitment that I really do appreciate. So thank you, Sarah. Um, and yeah, and we've got several vacancies, so 
So the only other thing I wanted to mention is that even if the board is not going to be meeting every month, um, I would like the opportunity to share with you some updates um, monthly about things that are happening in the financial realm here at Town Hall as we start. I know it sounds crazy, but we're not even at the beginning of the fiscal year, but we're starting for the next fiscal year. Uh, and we're also looking at year end and setting the tax rate. And we have all of our great new policies that um, this board helped uh, make a possibility. And so we really want to hold ourselves true to those deadlines. Um, and we really want to make sure that we're moving in the right direction and we're progressing um, in, a, in a way that the, the board um, and the Board of Selectmen as well um, can be proud of. So I would like to send out to the, the chair of the board monthly updates to be shared with the board members. Um, and if anyone has any specific questions or anything that, you know, they would like for additional information, like such as, you know, the information we just spoke about, um, I'm happy to do so. Great. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate that. So. I have a quick question if, if you've got a, a minute. Um, how, how are they, um, how's the accounting doing on, uh, uh, you know, what, what month are we working on? Um, I believe we're pushing. I know when I talked to Ellen just the other day, she was saying that we're, we're pushing for, you know, a certification of, of free cash in, in, in the September time frame. So we're, we're plugging away. I know that. And I know that because we're, like we said, just ending the annual town meeting time. We're like, all right, how do we, you know, year end close, you know, free cash certification, you know, tax rate. Like we've already had our initial next step phase. So I believe they're on a push. So I don't know exactly when, but I can definitely share that information with you if I, I double check with both the treasurer and the uh, accountant. But I know, like we said this year, we, we want to get it done quickly and efficiently. Yeah, because, you know, realistically, year end will be here before you know it. Yes. June 30th is uh, seven, eight weeks. Agreed. And the town meeting did not approve the stabilization transfer yes so, so that is a little bit of a, a, a misunderstanding between the auditors and the town in regards to what we needed to have on hand um, the original conversation with powers and Sullivan it made it sound as though we actually had to physically have the cash on hand for that variance because now that it's been on the books for the last two years and there's like a set amount and that amount has not changed over a certain amount of time they cannot issue us a clear a clean audit unless we adjust and so essentially what the auditors were saying is that it needs to go through the process so it needs to be documented and what will that means is that it's going to hit our free cash certification so there's no additional allocation of funding that needed to be done which was the disconnect between myself and the auditors. It doesn't need to be an additional set of funds. It just needs to be reported. And once it's reported, it's netted against that free cash number. So it brings that free cash number down. Um, and therefore, the next year, our free cash will be a little lower. But we also think that based upon some of the other things that we've been doing in town hall, like the HVAC system and the green energy credits and things of that nature, that it, we will still be within reason of where we are typically every year with our free cash about, you know, 200 to $400,000. So we don't think it will be necessarily a, a negative hit towards what we've been able to accomplish in the, the last few years. But it was a misunderstanding that the cash didn't physically needed to be allocated. It's just going to have a repercussion. Um, and that is in the form of our free cash certification. And we have talked to DOR and the auditors and they have in fact confirmed. So it was an unnecessary article, and it just caused a lot of confusion. Um, but we can, in fact, get some more information from the auditors if you'd like further backup on how that kind of comes up and how the audit is performed and how they mentioned it in the managed report and how they let it go for the last year and why they did. We can have them follow up with more information on that. We, we, we were able to look into the... Um in 2018 that the electric company or the electric department had a similar kind of almost exactly um, I don't know if you'd call it a variance but um, it, it, it could it be just you know a, an accounting error and a non cash impact where it's you know mr. debit here mr. credit here 
once I make that entry, it washes each other out and there's, there's no real impact. So I, when I talked to um, Mike Nelligan with uh, Powers and Sullivan, um, he referred to it as, uh, as an accounting error, but that dates way beyond 2018, um, back beyond even when Greg Lebrecht was here. Um, and it was something that had possibly transpired with the light department um, and the recording of such. So as to the specific whereabouts, that still has not been identified specifically. Um, but what I'm told by the auditors, in fact, that it happened before Greg, which I would imagine is what, 2000? Even Predates the town, I think. Well, I don't think that, but I know it's 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 two th it, it's before 2018, so it's not something that's you know in a like it, it it's it's something. So it's just coincidental that th those two numbers were. But it is something. Like. But the auditors did say that it is in fact, or what they understand it to be, is some type of accounting error with the light department and and a, a transfer of some sort or, or or something like that. Yes. And nobody's been able to audit the electric department's books to see if they. They have their own independent audit that they pay for out of their enterprise fund. Yeah. Um, so it, but it's just been something, again, that the auditors say that we have not been able to get off our books now that it's gotten down to, like it was, it's kept on growing, and now that it's a materialistic number and it's been identified and that variance has carried through for the last few years, we would not be able to, to get a clean audit without us um, going through the process. You can't just walk over to the electric department and say you owe me money, right? I, I can let you go over to the last right now, ma'am. <laughs> but it's not necessarily something, I mean, I think that like we had mentioned, like the whole intent was to try and get our books to be clean and accurately reflect the progress that we're making mm -hmm. and, and the reconciling of our accounts and making sure that we're doing that. And uh, get a and clean audit report, yeah, yeah. Everything, and so that we're trying to move forward and that the problem was identified in the past. It doesn't result in a, in a hit to our stabilization. We don't have to take any additional monies. Nothing like that needs to occur. It just needs to go through the process and we need to make sure that we're following our policies so something like that doesn't happen and it clearly hasn't in a very long time. It's not coming out of our stabilization, but it's going to be netted against our free cash. So it's still coming it's out. Still money. <laughs> so it won't make that's free cash that won't make it to stabilization. Yeah. So it's sort of the it's it's still coming out of our resources. It is. And I get it. It's, it's something that happened long ago, and we're trying to address it. It's just hard addressing a large number. <laughs> In this day and age, after we passed the 1.25, I know it's a hard pill to swallow. But, you know, at this point, it is what it is, right? I, I, don't, know how you, I don't know how you go back 20, 25 years and figure it out at this point. I mean, I'm, I did mention, you know, to after the town meeting and trying to learn a little bit more about, you know, what could be done and, and what the proper process was and that alerting us to that he didn't physically mean actual m money from a stabilization account, but that it just had to flow through on the, on the other end. You know, I said, should we get like a forensic audit of some sort or try and have somebody just look at that one specific account? Because if we can get that account down and you have to spend, you know, just five to ten thousand dollars, that's a that's a, a lot less of a figure to throw at it than, you know, the two fifty. Um, and he said that it's it's the it's been carrying through. It, it's been the same. He doesn't think that it's going to get resolved. He said he wouldn't recommend that we don't do it. But at this point, you have more to lose by not rectifying the problem just more money from a financialist uh, standpoint um, and then again once the DOR looked at our um, management report from the audit side of things they had actually reached out to us and said wait what is going on why hasn't this been reported on the tax sheet like for your tax you know so it was kind of one of those things where it's like at this point we just feel like we're we're stuck so I mean we could in fact try and get more um, done from like a, a like a special audit of that particular account, but how much of that would change and at what expense, I, I'm not certain. And it's been told to me that it's not advised, but not necessarily discouraged either. How long will it take you to complete the process that you're currently talking about? It, it won't. It, it will be taken care of this fiscal year. 
So it, it'll be done. Fiscal year 24, it won't be an issue. Oh, oh but by the end of this June or next? So as part of our free cash certification, so it'll, it'll close out the fiscal year 23 year. I won't charge you a dime, but I'll be happy to take a look at it and see when the last time I reckon so and see if I can follow it forward. Um, I, I'm actually kind of well versed in forensic accounting just because of the one that's nets I've been in in the past. You're more than welcome to take a look and try and help us figure out. But I'm, I know, like we said, the treasurer collector has been looking at it. I know we have um, Mary Beth, who is our treasurer clerk, who's a retired treasurer from uh, the city of Havel. She was looking at it for a very long time and was able to get a couple of other accounts in order. So um, we've definitely made efforts. But if you would like to take another stab at it before we go through that process, then you, you're more than willing to. I'll, I'll get you a desk, a computer, and all the information you need. I won't charge you a penny, just, yeah, download me the data and, sure, I have a gun. Yeah, I've got some free time. Sounds good. And if we can save $10,000, back. all I've got is time. Good. Anything else? Anybody else? Okay. Motion to adjourn at 621. Anybody? Make the motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you all so much.